Let's do some problem solving to work out this first particle physics question. So the quark combination of a particle is a strange and an anti-up quark. What is true? So we can go through these one at a time um, and see if we can figure out what the correct answer is. So barrier number of one, and uh, note that has to be three quarks for that to happen. Um, charge, we could come back to that one later, that could be true. Um, it's definitely not a um, pion because a pion has to be quark and an anti-quark pair. Um, but it also has to be no strange quark in it, so that's not going to be a pion. Uh, strangeness, it's got a strange quark in it, um, so that means it has a strangeness of minus one, not minus one third. So let's talk about this charge one then. An anti-up quark, um, an up quark on your equation sheet is plus two thirds, this is minus two thirds charge, and a strange um, is going to be minus a third as well. So add a third to minus a third uh, gives you one, uh, minus one, and obviously that's the relative charge. The true value of the charge is therefore 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Next one over here, we've got a series of decays. Um, so it says it starts with a certain nuclei P and ends with a certain isotope. So isotope meaning it's got a different number um, of uh, protons in it. So which is the possible sequence for these decays? So basically you have to go through one at a time again and figure out which one's going to end up with an isotope. Um, so meaning, um, so same number of protons, um, but a different uh, number of neutrons. So um, number of neutrons, uh, let's figure out which one's which. So for alpha, we should know that the uh, mass number, um, sorry, or nuclear number, um, if we're looking at Z and A. Um, so for alpha, we've got A is minus two, and Z is minus four. Um, and for beta particles, we're gonna have A, it actually um, increases by one, uh, and Z is unchanged. So therefore, um, let's have a look at each one. Alpha particle um, decay followed by four beta pluses. So one alpha means we've got um, A is going to be minus two. And then four beta pluses means A is plus four. So that's not going to be the same element um, because there's different um, atomic numbers or different proton numbers. One alpha decay, so A to minus two, followed by two beta plus decays. Uh, yeah, it looks like it could be this one because we've got um, the same atomic number or same proton number as there was before. Let's just go through the other ones just to be sure. Two alpha decays, so that'll be A to the minus four, followed by two beta plus decays. Nope, that's not going to be equal. Two alpha followed by one beta, not even close. So it's definitely going to be part, uh, option B uh, because we have the same atomic number or same proton number after as we did at the start. The next question is also um, about isotopes. This question is also about isotopes and um, we've got a graph here with neutrons versus protons um, and we haven't got any numbers, we've just got plus one and minus one uh, for what there is originally. Uh, so we've got three isotopes, which of these rows identifies an isotope of P and the nuclear number of this isotope? So P, uh, if we look at the start, has proton number of X. So for an isotope, it basically has to be Q because an isotope um, is going to have the same um, proton number or same number of protons. So only looking at Q, um, so the nuclear number of an isotope, um, let's have a look at the total nucleons, uh, which would be protons plus neutrons. Um, so if we've got um, Q, it's got a neutron number of plus one, um, so therefore we are just going to have to add so X plus Y plus one, because we've got an extra one in the graph here, uh, meaning it's option B. Next one, um, we've got a, an unstable nucleus um, in this question. It's the case by positron emission uh, to form a nuclei, nuclei X. It starts off as boron. Um, now positron emission, uh, we should know how that gets caused, is a proton decays into a neutron plus a positron and a neutrino as well. So when the positron um, is emitted, we basically have a proton decaying into a neutron. So we need to have one of these um, atoms here um, is gonna have to um, reflect that change. In addition to this, and I missed this the first time I read the question, um, it says the very first thing, an alpha particle and a nucleus of boron interact to form an unstable nucleus and a free neutron. So you have to figure out what these two form together first. So an alpha particle, we've got two and four as the proton and nucleon numbers, um, plus our boron uh, with five and ten. And then it said that makes a free neutron. So we've got something um, makes a something plus a neutron. Um, so adding everything together, um, at the bottom we're going to have seven um, into a mystery element X. Uh, and 4 and 10 minus the one we've lost to the neutron gives us 13. So if we look carefully, um, we're going to have this element here, which is going to be originally nitrogen. However, then we said it loses a proton to become a neutron. So we have this element here, so 13 and 7, um, then it loses, has a proton becomes a neutron. Um, so if we uh, do the proper emission for that, so we have a beta plus particle plus our neutrino. Um, a proton becomes a neutron, this then becomes 6. This doesn't change. Um, and it happens to be option B, uh, which is our carbon.
This question is all about Feynman diagrams um, and identifying what the points are, what the particles are here for this particle interaction. So it doesn't tell us anything really at the start apart from um, that it's positron emission. So we need to know the equation for positron emission. That's a proton turns into a neutron plus a positron uh, plus a neutrino. So let's just see which row of these matches up. Um, and now we've got quarks here, which means there's actually a layer to this question. We do need to know what quarks are in a proton. We've got up, up, and down, and a neutron is up, down, and down. So therefore, we are going to have basically E has to be um, this uh, quark here changing into D because the other two stay the same. So we've got up into down makes a positron plus, as we said before, a neutrino. We don't have to worry about the exchange particle in this question, uh, which is very nice of it. Um, so let's have a look at which one of these matches up with what we're trying to find. Uh, up makes down plus neutrino. It's the first option. Save ourselves some time. We figured out already. Um, so it's part, it's uh, answer A for this question. Now I've got a non-multiple choice question here where we've got some sort of quick, quick fire uh, answers uh, again with a Feynman diagram in it. Um, so particle X we just kind of went through a second ago. Um, that's going to be a neutron up, down, down. And the type of interaction that occurs, because we've got a W boson, that means this has to be a weak interaction, so weak decay. Next one, and the class of particles to which a uh, W minus belongs uh, is a boson, um, so one of the exchange particles, uh, but you'd have to say boson um, here, I think, um, for the mark. Uh, next one, it shows how a charge and baryon number conserved in this interaction. Love These um, examiners love giving this type of question um, about conservation of different things. Um, so how to kind of make it um, you know, life easier a little bit um, is just put a little C there for charge and then we'll do sort of before and afterwards, okay? So um, we could do the whole thing and we've got charge before. So up, we've got this all information in our equation sheet. So we've got plus two thirds for up, minus a third for down, minus a third for down, makes and then we've got on the other side we've got now up um, and then we've got down and we've got up again and then if we look at the charge of the other particles we've got and um, we've got minus one for our electron and then we've got a neutrino is nothing so uh, let's have a look um, so we've got plus two thirds minus a third minus a third that gives zero makes plus two thirds minus a third um, and plus two thirds that's one minus one uh, plus zero makes zero, so therefore it's conserved. Um, so we're going to look at the next one here, um, baryon number. So I'm just going to do a B for baryon number. You could write out in full. Um, so it says reference all quarks. So, you know, it's a bit of a pain. We've got to reference everything in here. So I've got plus a third. Um, so these are all just regular baryons because they're not anti-baryons. Third, third, third makes. Uh, and the other side, we've got more quarks, three more quarks. So third, third and third. Um, and then if we look at our neutrino and electron, we should know they're leptons, they are not baryons. Um, so therefore we've got one uh, baryon on the left, one baryon on the right. Um, so therefore it's all conserved. The only stable baryon um, is just a factor you guys need to know. Um, this would be the proton. So proton is the only uh, baryon that doesn't decay very quickly. Um, a muon is an unstable particle. Again, something else you need to know what is produced um, when a muon uh, decays into um, other particles. So we have a muon, um, it decays into an electron um, and it has an electron uh, antineutrino um, and it also decays into a, a muon and a muon and neutrino um, at the same time.